What's going on everybody? Welcome to part seven of the Python 3 basic series. In this part, we're gonna be talking a little bit more on functions, and this time we're gonna be talking about function parameters and then implementing those for our game. Mostly because pretty much every time, you know, we're gonna input a user's movement, uh, and then we're gonna call game board again. And every time there's a play, we're gonna in theory be doing that. And so I think it would make more sense to go ahead and include the play in the game board function. So before we do that, I'm just gonna comment this out really quickly and we're gonna do some quick examples and then apply it to what we have. So first of all, let's just do define and we're gonna make a super simple function that takes x and y and then it just returns x plus y. So it just does addition. Obviously, we don't, you know, you don't need a function for this. You could just say some variable equals x plus y or, you know, five plus two or whatever. Uh, but this is just for uh, simplicity's sake. So what if we said print, you know, addition five and three? Uh, well, of course, the output here is uh, going to be eight. Um, so then, you know, you could also assign this. You could say uh, z equals addition uh, five three, and then you could print z. Um, pretty much the same thing. So. Uh, the other thing that I, I just want to bring up quickly too, as far as parameters are concerned and really definitions of variables is like, what happens if we change this up? Like what if, what if we take in, Hey, and, um, there, and just so it looks pretty, I'll add a space and we print that out. Well, this time these things added together are actually just like two strings being appended to each other. So that works too. Um, but what if we did like a five in there and we try that? Okay, that gets really angry at us, <laughs> right? Um, because we can't actually, the, the actual addition, the whole thing where we're actually adding things together, the methods for these two types of data are not the same. So these two types of objects, integer and string, we, there is no methodology for adding them together. Therefore, we can't actually do that. Now, um, this kind of brings home a, a slight point with Python that uh, we don't normally have uh, typing information. So Python is, uh, let's just do back to hey. Python is what we call dynamically typed, as in the variables that we use and pass and stuff, like when we define a variable, we actually don't say, hey, variable x is an int or a float, whereas a lot of programming languages will require you to do that. And, but in Python, we don't have to. Now, this is a gift and a curse at the same time. Uh, because of dynamic typing, we, the, you know, in the back end, the program has to be prepared for the, for the case where, hey, this might, right now, it could be an integer, but tomorrow or the next time it comes through, it could actually be um, a float or a string or something else, right? So, um, so in Python, that takes a little bit more overhead to process. So uh, you can specify types in Python if you want to. So you could say X and I, I think, and the only reason I say I think is because I actually don't, I can't remember for sure. I think this is how you do it. Um, and in fact, let's just try. And for some reason, so like this I think is an annotation. There is a way um, and annotations people don't use either. And there is a way I believe that you can specify and enforce typing in Python. I honestly forget what it is and I have never ever seen it used in practice. People just don't do it. So the only time I've ever seen something like this in practice is with um, something called Cython, which is a way for you basically to, um, whoops, not Python, uh, pythonprogramming.net. It's a way for you to implement basically your Python program and get it pretty much as best as possible converted to C. But most of the work that you're gonna be doing there is literally um, adding typing information. Where the heck, here we go. Yeah, so rather than doing def, you might do a C def or a CP def, but then you would you actually give it uh, typing information. But more on that later, or if you're interested in learning more about Cython, you can just go, or, uh, type in Cython on pythonprogramming.net. Okay, so let's get back to our game board example. So I'm just gonna bring it up. And basically what I'd like to be able to do is pass the player into 
um, into game board. So there's a lot of different ways that we can utilize parameters. We can, uh, we can basically make a parameter required to be passed. Uh, or we can specify like a default value for that parameter and then the user doesn't actually have to pass a value if they don't want to. So in our case, why might we want to not have to pass? Like, so let's say we want to pass um, maybe the game board, the player number, and then where does that player want to play? What, would there ever be a time when we didn't want to pass any of those? Well, what if we just want to, you know, just see the game board, like at the start of the game? Um, we might want to do that, therefore, we might want to wait for this function to not actually require any input from the user, or in our case, from the programmer who's just like programming the logic here. So, first of all, let's just make it super simple, and let's say for this, now we want to, let's just say we want to get rid of this for now. So we're going to pass, what do we need? Well, we need the, um, you know, basically in this case, the row, column, and then this is the player number. So we need all those things. So we need row, column, and then, um, and then I kind of want to put player first. So player, like that. So now, these parameters, in order to run this function, we have to pass these parameters. So if I just like comment these two things out and we try to run this, it's gonna get angry with us uh, because we didn't actually pass any of the required uh, parameters. Let me just, uh, yeah. So this is the actual error it throws. And it says, hey, game board is missing three of the required positional arguments. And it even tells us, um, hey, you gotta pass these things. And if we just pass one of the things, like we'll pass a one here, um, we're still missing two more. We're missing row and column because it goes in order. So the next thing you might be aware of is to pass a value for player, we really could just pass one. And then let's say we want to play on row two, column zero. We can pass things like this, one, two, and zero. So I could run this and everything works. Obviously we didn't play a specific place yet because we haven't handled for that. Um, but we're able to run the function by passing them like this. But later on, like right now, game board is right underneath our functions uh, definition. So it's pretty legible because we can always just like glance up here. But in long code, that's not going to be legible, <laughs> right? So if you're passing hard values like that, that's going to be pretty hard. But what if your variable name is literally, um, you know, uh, current player and then uh, row choice, um, call choice, right? In that case, if you've named your variables uh, pretty good names, um, you, you definitely still don't need any more information. Anybody reading this code is like, oh, okay, I know it's being passed. Um, but in our case, what if we don't because we are just kind of hard coding them? How can we handle for that? Well, you can also just say player equals one, uh, row equals two, and then uh, column equals zero. We could run that again. Everything worked. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can kind of you can mix it up. So you could, um, for example, you could say just one here, row two, column zero. That's totally fine. Um, and then the other thing we can do is add defaults to the game board. So player could we could default to zero, row can default to zero, and column can default to zero. So we might want to do this just so that uh, this function could be run and just like if we just want to see the game board we could run that and everything's fine right so now let's add our logic for actually marking up this game board so what we'll do is right here we will just say um, let's just say game and then row and then column so these values these variables here are just whatever value is passed through those parameters we can just say that equals whatever the player was passed. And this is why 000 is gonna work just fine. It's just gonna set everything um, to zero, at least for now. Because <laughs> later, if we've actually played here and if a player actually has a position uh, on the game board, we're gonna set that position to zero and that's not gonna be very good. But for now, it works just fine. And then later, if we were to say uh, game board, um, let's just run it again. Uh, and then we're going to play uh, player equals one, row equals two, column equals one, or something like that. We can see, okay, yeah, it's been uh, marked there. 
So the only other thing I might say here is um, maybe if we said, like we definitely want to have some sort of handling for how, you know, how do we want to actually display the game if we didn't pass anything here? So, and the other, the other thing to note is um, like, let's see. So what we could say here is just if, um, if player not actually does not equal zero or something like that whoops and then just tab this over um, then play it this way you also could have like a little flag like that might even make more sense like uh, just display and just display could equal false to start um, and then instead you could say um, if if not, just display, display, just display equals false. So then you could say here, just display equals true. In this case, if we scroll up, we get just the purely display and we didn't set zero, zero equals zero. Cause again, if let's say someone had actually played at that zero, zero mark, we would be in trouble, right? So, uh, so now if just display is equal to true, so if not just display, so if just display, we're not gonna actually run this code. And then otherwise, no matter what happens, we wanna print out the game board. So um, I think that's a, a decent place uh, for us to, to stop, but I wanna start talking about, what about this game board being defined outside of our function and then we're using our function to modify the game board right now that's working and everything's fine we're not running into any problems doing that but as long as you continue down this path of doing things that way like modifying a function or modifying a thing that's outside of your function you're gonna find some weird things start happening and if you don't learn either how to properly do it every time correctly, or how to just kind of do it by habit and just always get the thing that you want. Um, later on down the road, you're gonna be pulling your hair out, trying to figure out why your programming isn't doing what you know it should be doing, <laughs> but yet at the same time, you know programming is infinitely logical and you're making a mistake somewhere and it just is driving you nuts. So in the next tutorial, we're gonna be talking about the concepts of mutability and immutability, which we've already somewhat talked about, but this is kind of a different, a different variation on that topic. So anyways, that's what we're gonna be doing in the next tutorial. A quick shout out to my most recent sponsors. Um, I'm gonna have a really hard time with some of these names. I'm gonna call you uh, Tib the Penguin, Mr. Wecky or Wetchy? I'm not sure. I'm going to go with Wecky. Uh, Erica and Joseph Coleman, thank you guys very much for your support. Uh, and I think that is it. I will see you guys in the next video.